the co-pastor of Christ Healing Evangelical Church, Faith Chapel, Mississauga, Canada. She's fondly called Pastor D and oversees the church administration as well as the Women of Wisdom Ministry. She's a prayer intercessor, dynamic preacher, conference speaker, and teacher of the word. She ministers the word of God passionately and concisely. Pastor D has a strong passion for empowering women and young adults to maximize their potential, embrace their destinies, and actualize their God-given vision. As an author, Pastor Dyer has worked to make this desire a reality by writing Destiny Drivers, a book that has helped many children of God to recognize and achieve their God-ordained destinies. She also desires to see the children of God worship and serve him freely and unhindered in all capacity. Pastor Dyer holds a master's degree in occupational therapy with which she practices in the Toronto area. Those words to his children are forefather. He didn't say it's only by the age of 40 you should multiply or by the age of 25 you should multiply. He didn't say that when you turn to 60 you should not multiply anymore. It's, it, it is not seasonal. It is something that must be continuous, progressive flow. She's happily married to Pastor Yemi Ogunsoya, the senior pastor of Faith Chapel, and they are blessed with two awesome gifts, John and Queen Esther, who are both serving in the ministry alongside their parents. Let somebody shout, hallelujah. Can we please be on our feet? as we welcome our beloved beloved pastor all the way from canada pastor mrs dayo ogusonya god bless you ma Musa. Hallelujah. Can you hear me? Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I need to see the people's faces. Hallelujah. Let me see you if you can hear me. Aha. <laughs> Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Father, we honor you this afternoon. We praise you. We glorify your name. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you because when your daughters gather, <laughs> you have something for them. Daddy, we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for this gathering of champions, gatherings, or gathering of heroes, gathering of great and mighty vessels. Lord, we are so grateful. Thank you for the innumerable company of angels that have come to join us today. Thank you, O oh Lord, for setting your throne among us this afternoon. We are so grateful to you. Speak to us, Lord, as your daughters. Talk to us. Bear your mind to us as we go even along this time. Thank you, Jesus. We receive all that you have for us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Please, 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 I want you to celebrate Pastor Balogu for me. As we are still standing, Pastor Mrs. Balogu, please let me celebrate the woman of God. Awesome woman of God. I love you, man. You know that I love you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you for wonderful works that you are doing. God, only God will reward you. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Help me to celebrate daddy as well, Pastor Balogu. Glory to God. Thank you, sir, for allowing us to give expression to what God has placed in our hearts. I thank you. I appreciate you. You are a secure man, just as mommy has said. Thank you so much. We appreciate you. Uh, your strength will not go down in the name of Jesus. As you continue to lead, the Holy Spirit will lead you in the name of Jesus. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I want you, before you sit down, celebrate yourself. I want you women, celebrate yourself. Applaud yourself. Give yourself that standing ovation. Tell yourself, I have done well. I am doing well. I am going places, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Now sit majestically in the presence of the almighty God. Glory be to God. I'm so honored to be among you today. It's an awesome privilege. I take it as a privilege to be ministering to wonderful women. The desire of my heart is that women, uh, women take their position not only in the kingdom, of course we belong to the kingdom, but we are here in this world. So we take our positions even in the kingdom as well in this, as in this world. And the Lord will continue to help us in the mighty name of Jesus. Today I have, my assignment is very simple uh, because the, the theme that we, we have for this, uh, for this conference is a theme that is very self-explanatory. You know, we, all we have to do is to receive what that theme is talking to us about, and then we move on with it. Our theme is taken from the book of Micah, of course, Arise and Fresh, O Daughter of Zion. Uh, it, it, the book of Micah chapter 4, verse 13 is where the theme is taken from. But I want to quickly read from verse 11 so that we can, you know, have what the assignment and what we need to get from there. It says from verse 11, I'm reading from the Amplified Version. It says, now many nations are assembled against you saying, let her be profaned and let our eyes gaze upon Zion. But they know not the thoughts of the Lord, neither do they understand his plan, for he shall gather them as the sheep to the threshing floor. Arise and thresh. O daughter of Zion, for I will make your horn iron and I will make your hoofs bronze. You shall beat in pieces many peoples and I will devote, I will devote, I will devote their gain to the Lord and their treasure to the Lord of all the earth. Hallelujah. Before I go on, <laughs> I want to appreciate, you know, my, my brothers and sisters from Faith Chapel. Some of them have joined on Zoom this morning. One of them is my blessed son. He goes, he's a guy. He's, he goes everywhere with me, either virtually or even in person. I appreciate you all. Uh, I, I can see some of you on Zoom. Thank you, thank you. And I believe that some are still joining. I appreciate you. Thank you for the support. Glory be to God. I also appreciate my husband is in another you know, retreat right now. Uh, my only husband is the sugar in my tea. I don't care what anybody says. Hallelujah. And like uh, Pastor Leia has said, there is no, 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 no room. There is no other room in Asso Rock. <laughs> Hallelujah. We are grateful to God. We've been married for 26 years. Uh, God has been good to us. Hallelujah. We are happily married. I love him. He is the brain inside my skull. I can't do anything without him. He, he, he is the only thing that I can think about. Anyway, don't let me keep going, hallelujah, because if I keep going, we will not, uh, we will not hear what God has to say this morning. Glory be to God. So like I said earlier, my assignment is two. Two things that I would want to do this morning is to remind you, because it says in this scripture, it says, arise and thresh. Oh, daughter of Zion, I want to remind you of who you are. And also, I want to remind you of the power that you carry. That's all you need to arise and to fresh. Who are you and what power do you carry? It, uh, it, you need to know who you are before you can arise. Where, where I come from and from the songs and everything, I find out that we are mainly from Africa. 
here. So I am also from Africa. I am from Nigeria, and I come from Yoruba land. When a, when somebody gets up and say I am here, they will say where who, where are you from? They will ask you Omotanie. If you understand Yoruba, who, who, whose child are you? And I want to drum it into us to, uh, to, to, to remind us of who we are. But first of all, let me talk about the, where we come from. The Bible says, oh, daughter of Zion. It means that we come from Zion. We are daughters of Zion. Now, let me, let me paint a picture of what Zion looks like to you. Zion is a city. Zion, in the, according to the book of Psalm chapter 48, verse 2, Psalm 48, verse 2, the Bible says that Zion is the city of the Most High God. Psalm 48, verse 2 tells us that. It says Zion is a city. Let me read it to us. It, says, it is a beautiful, it is beautiful in its loftiness. The joy of the whole earth, like the utmost highs of Zion is Mount Zion the city of the great king. That means that God is the king of Zion. So everything in that city is owned by God. You know, if you, uh, uh, there is no way I can speak without talking about the monarchy. I love the British monarchy. I follow them. I love their children. But if you look at the British monarchy, it will help us to explain what Zion looks like. You see, everything in Britain belongs to the queen. And those of us who live in Canada, everything in Canada belongs to the queen because they have some countries that they have taken over. In our money, we have queen on it, on our streets, every, everywhere, you know, it's about the monarchy. And it's the same thing with the kingdom of God. It's the same thing with Zion. Everything in Zion belongs to God. Zion, the Bible says, is the perfection of beauty. So I'm painting the city that you come from. I'm painting where you come from. Then I will now tell you who you are to you. Now you come from Zion. Zion is the perfection of beauty. According to Psalm 50 verse 2. I'm not going to be looking at all these places. Please write them down. I want you to go and look at the picture of that city when you get home. Psalm 50 verse 2 says that Zion is the perfection of beauty. So now begin to look at yourself differently. When you come from where beauty is perfected, I don't care what anybody tells you. What, where you come from is a perfection of beauty. So in your life must be perfection of beauty. Hallelujah. Zion is the chosen place where God chooses to enthrone. God has decided that he's going to enthrone himself in Zion. According to Psalm 132 verses 13 and 14. Zion is a place, is a place of praise. Psalm 65 verse 1 tells us that. It says Zion is a place of praise. Zion is symbolic of the place where people gather to praise the Lord. So I don't care what you are going through. You belong to the city of praise. And praise will not, will not be lacking in your life in the mighty name of Jesus. I am speaking to one woman this afternoon. I declare over you that people must gather this year to praise God on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. Sir. You belong to the city of celebration. Celebration will no longer stop in your lives in the name of Jesus. As from today, you will no longer be tolerated. You will now begin to be celebrated in the name of Jesus. There is peace in Zion. According to Isaiah chapter 33, verse 20, there is peace in Zion. There is healing in Zion. Isaiah 20, 33, verse 24a. There is forgiveness in Zion. Isaiah 33, 24b. So there is peace. There must be peace in your city. There must be healing. In, so if there is anything that is contrary to this in your life, I remove them by the authority that is in the name and the word of God in the mighty name of Jesus. If you are here today and the devil has lied to you and told you that your sins are too grievous for God to forgive, I want you to tell the devil right now, I don't care where you were last night. I don't care where, where if you went to sleep with another man last night. But because you have come to Zion, because you 
belong to Zion. There is forgiveness for you. So today, I cause every root of sin, every root of deception from the enemy over you in the mighty name of Jesus. Sisters, your sins are not too grievous to be forgiven. The blood of Jesus has taken care of your sin. And the Bible says here there is forgiveness. So anytime you miss it, all you need to do is to go to the king of Zion, who happens to be your daddy. Hallelujah. Whatever you do, does not, it doesn't concern the devil. The devil has no part in your life. Because you dwell in the city of the Most High God. Because you belong to the king of the city of Zion. So the devil is an intruder. So whatever the work of the devil in your life gets terminated today in the mighty name of Jesus. There is refuge in Zion. According to Isaiah chapter 14 verse 32, the B part, there is strength in Zion. And I want to announce to you, daughters of God, that Zion is the church, the body of Christ. Hallelujah. This scripture that we are looking into is a prophetic scripture that is supposed to be taking place in our lives right now. When the prophet Micah was speaking this scripture, he was talking prophetically into the church of God, the body of Christ. Because now the body of Christ is Zion. According to Hebrews chapter 12, verse 22, it says you have come to the Mount Zion, the city of the Most High God. So the, the assembly of the believers, hallelujah. So Mount Zion is now where you are. As long as you are born again, as long as you have given your life to Christ, you belong into Zion. So all these things that I have read out belong to you. So if I were you, it's a good time to begin to thank God for placing you in Mount Zion, for placing you in Zion, for making you to be a partaker. Wow, this is the best time to be alive, brethren. This is the best time to be alive. Thank God that we were not alive in the time of the Israelites because what we have right now, they did not have it. We have it all. We have access to the fullness of God. Hallelujah. In Zion, glory be to God. And then I want to talk quickly about who you are. The Bible says you are a daughter of Zion. Before you can rise, before you can thresh, you must know who you are. A few days ago, I was, um, I don't remember where I was watching it, either on Facebook or something. You know how you just see this stuff pop up on your phone? Or maybe somebody sent it to me. It was a, 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 a something, it was a video about a rabbit and a cat in a house. So the owner owns the rabbit and the cat as pets. So the rabbit will be hopping, you know, will be hopping and the cat will be walking. And they hung out together for a while that the cat kept looking at the rabbit. And then after a while, the cat now started to hop like the rabbit, it was hopping around the house. And I thought about it, I said, wow. The reason the cat was hopping was because the cat had forgotten who he was. Cats don't hop. Actually, you know when you are on red carpet, you are doing a, this modeling thing, they say you are cat walking. Cats, walks, cats walk elegantly. They walk, you know, like they have their heads high and they walk, but when a cat begins to hop, you know it is out of character. A lot of us, one of the reasons that a lot of us as daughters of Zion, one of the reasons that we don't fulfill our destiny is because we are confused about our identity. For us to rise, for us to thresh, we must know who we are. We must know our identity. Ignorance of identity brings low self-esteem. Ignorance of identity brings jealousy. You begin to go into competition with who you don't need to go into competition with. You go into unhealthy competition. When there is silhouette challenge, you are there. When there is busted challenge, you are there with them. On social media, you are opening yourself up. And like I said, I love the monarchy. I would never see one of those women in, 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 in the British monarchy opening themselves up. Because why? Because they know who they are. If you look at uh, Queen Elizabeth, if you look at uh, uh, Princess Catherine, even if you look at the one that we have just, you know, that has just come in, the new princess of success, 
you will see that the moment she found out that she belongs to the monarchy, her dressing changed. Her, the way that she walked changed. Everything about her changed. You, when you know your identity, the daughter of the king of Zion, you know that you, you don't belong into some places. So ignorance of, what, of who we are will not allow us to rise. But today, I want to open and encourage us that we need to begin to pay attention to who we are. Who we are is very, very important. You are not just here in this world to be a baby factory or a doormat. You are not a woman because you can cook. That's not why you are here. Let me tell you something, sisters. Even men in the Bible cooked. Esau was a good cook. That's why the, his, his father told him to go and make food for him. And our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ was able to cook. He cooked for the disciples in the book of John chapter 21. Many women are not sure what their place is in destiny. So they allow the society, they allow their experiences, they allow their challenges and all of those things to name them. Let me tell you something, sisters. What the society does not understand, the society will label. Society will not understand you until you understand who you are. God is a God of purpose and everything that he created he has purpose in mind, in mind. When purpose is not known, abuse is inevitable. Hallelujah. So today, I want to tell you that you are not a biological accident. One bad chapter in your life, one bad chapter in a book does not mean that the book has ended. I want to tell you, sisters, today that your life is a book and it is a bestseller. Do you know who the author of your life is? It is God, your father, the one that called you daughter. Do you know what daughter means? When I looked at it in, from the, I, I want to quickly describe you as a daughter now. When I looked at daughter in the Strong's Concordance, it says the apple of the eye. And if you are a daughter, especially a daughter to a man who is, or if you have daughters, I have a daughter and I have a son. I can see how my husband relates to, to my daughter. He guides her as if she's an egg. Sometimes I even get jealous, like, ah, uh -uh, what is it? If I tell him something, can I, can I have this? He will ask my daughter, can mommy have this? The, the way that daddies take care of daughters, they got it from God. You are the apple of God's eye. Your father is the king of Zion. Is that changing anything in your life? When you know that the one that owns the universe calls you daughter, it changes something. You are the last born of God. Woman, do you know that? You are pampered. You know you are the last born of God? When God created woman, he finished. When he created man, he said that, I'm not done yet. He looked at it. It was good. But when he now said, no, 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 it's not very good yet. You are the last born. When God created you, he ended everything. He finished. You are the crown of creation. You are the epitome of everything good. Tell somebody, I am very good. I don't care what your immigration status is. When your father owns the land, it is a matter of time for you to get your papers because your daddy got the land. Hallelujah. I don't care if they have told you that you have an incurable disease. It is only a matter of time because of the kind of father that you have. He sent his only begotten son at that time who later became the firstborn for us. He sent him to go and redeem you and also to go and take care of your sickness. So it's only a matter of time before your healing manifests. If you have been charged barren, <laughs> it's only a matter of time before people will gather together and celebrate your twins and your triplets with you. It's only a matter of time, sisters because you are the epitome of all good things. You complete creation. God has validated you. You don't need any man or not, not, you don't need anybody to validate you. God said, you are my daughter. 
So you don't need anything to validate you. I hope I'm getting you to where you need to be right now. Where you need to be, you need to begin to look at yourself differently. Society does not, you don't need to join women's liberation. You are already liberated. You don't need to join those who are calling themselves feminists. Oh, Karaba Shetty. God has called you his daughter, his last born, the apple of his eye. You don't need anybody. You don't need any group to validate you. Hallelujah. God strategically made you. Everything God did not remember to put in a man when he was creating man, he put inside of you. He looks at man. Man, these two things in front of them is nothing. Let me put a little juice there so that they can look better. He looked at you. He said, look at that. I want you to be, I look at that Howard glass. I need it to look like that. He looked at you. He said, I need a little flesh on each side. So don't worry. Society may call you fat. It doesn't matter. God created you. You are fat and you are flourishing. Society may say you are too skinny. Let me tell you something. You are skinny because God made you so. Society may tell you that, ah, look at our hip. They are out of place. Let me tell you, the way that God made you is the way that he wants you to be. God validated you. You don't need anyone to validate you. Hallelujah. When you get home, you look in the mirror. You say, well, fine, man. I am beautiful, man. God made me. I am. Fear. Let me read something to you. Let me jump ahead of myself. Isaiah chapter 139, uh, Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. This is what I read to myself. In the Passion Translation, it says, You formed my innermost being. I'm reading Psalm 139, verses 13 to 16. The Passion Translation. You formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside. You wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. <laughs> it simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me. You even formed every bone in my body when you created me in the secret place. You carefully, skillfully, you shaped me from nothing to something. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I have seen the light of day, the number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. Hallelujah. God rested after he created you. You are a man with a womb. You are a womb man. That means that you can reproduce. Not only children, you are fruitful. If God deposits something, that is the reason you find that women are great interior decorators. They are great People, the tailors and all those other things, people, women will put flowers together. You will be like, wow, hallelujah. Because God placed inside of you something that can reproduce. You know, womb is an oven to incubate and to bring out. Hallelujah. So the very good dimension of God was you. When God created everything else, the Lord in book of Genesis chapter one, the Lord said it was good. It was good. When he created the earth, it was good. When he created water, it was good. When he created land, it was good. Sun, it was good. Man, it was good. Then he looked at it and said, it is not good until I create my emblem, the highest form of creation. Until I create her, it is not good. Then he now made woman. He made you. He made me. And then we complete the creation of God. You are a completer. Anywhere you get to, things get completed. You are the emblem of God's perfection. You are the one that God placed the stamp of excellence on, upon. Woman, <laughs> that is why that God was able to rest after he created you. Your arrival announced perfection and excellence. 
The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 12, verse 4, it says that you are the crown of creation. You are the emblem of royalty and authority. That's what a crown is. The Bible says a good wife is a crown unto her husband. <laughs> but she who causes shame is like rottenness in his home. An excellent wife is the crown of her husband. You are the crown of your husband because God made you excellent. Hallelujah. A crown is only one in the head. That is the reason you can never be any man's doormat. But you need to know that. You are supposed to be at, on the head of your husband. That's the reason in Proverbs chapter 31, that man was sitting at the gate and started to talk about his wife. Yeah, our husbands, we call them, oh, my crown, my everything, but it's the other way around, actually. The, our husband takes on, you see, when you have a good husband that appreciates you and you are good to him, he goes around and brags about you. Hallelujah. So we are the crown of creation. We are the beauty of monarchy. We are the body, you, we are the changer of atmosphere. Do you know that anywhere a woman gets to, the atmosphere changes? Go to a bachelor's house. You will see their shoes in front of their television. But let that bachelor marry a wife. You will see changes. You will see that instead of shoe, the woman will put flower. They will remove the shoe and put it in the closet where it be be belongs. You will see candles in the homes. Do you ever, unless maybe, maybe one or two bachelors that you know, I don't know any of them that would light candle in their house. But let a woman enter a man's house. You will find out that the atmosphere changes. You are the designer's original. In the book of the book of, uh, uh, of Ephesians chapter 2, verse 10, the New Living Translation, the Bible calls you the masterpiece, the handmaid of God. God took his time to curve you, took his time to shape you. You are the masterpiece of God. There is no two like you. That is the reason why we don't need to compete with anyone. Because there is no two like you. Hallelujah. You are a blessing. You are not a curse. And finally, the last thing that I want to tell you about yourself is that you carry the fullness of God inside of you. In the book of Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, Colossians chapter 1, verse 19, the Bible said that God put his fullness inside of Christ. He said, for it pleased the Father that in him, in him, in Christ, all the fullness shall dwell. Then now jump to verse 27 of that same scripture. Verse 27 of that. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you. Christ in you, the hope of glory. See, God put Jesus, he put all his fullness, all his power, all his attributes, all his glory, all his majesty, everything about him, he put it inside of Jesus in verse 19. Then, this is the mystery that the devil did not want us to have. He did not want us to know that even that fullness in Christ, Christ himself now dwells inside of us. So all the attributes of God, all the glory of God, all, we always say God says his glory should not be shared with anyone, but that is not the kind of glory that God is talking about. We are permitted because the child of a lion is a lion. If you are a child of God, you carry the glory of God. You carry the fullness of the power of God inside of you as the daughter, the last one. He puts everything inside of you, plus more. The glory of God, the fullness, the power of God inside of you. So with this understanding, you must arise with this understanding of who you are. You are not a non-entity. You are not just a used to be. You are not just a, a, a woman that was born by accident. I don't care what your past is. Nobody cares. It is only the devil that cares about your past. Jesus and our God and me and your pastor's wife and your pastor care about your future. That's the reason pastor was telling you that if you are working for one man, you can never be a millionaire. We tell, I tell my people too. To be, I have never seen an employee millionaire before in my life. To be a millionaire, you need to get work. We care, you need to get your own business. We care about your future. God cares about your future, but the devil wants you to be 
thinking about your past. Oh, I committed ad abortion when I was 25. That's why I cannot have children. No, 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 no. God has erased all that. The moment you enter Zion, everything has been erased. The only thing that you need to erase is that thought from your mind. And when you take that thought out of your mind, you begin to see yourself as the fruitful one, as the one that is going places, the mother of nations. You begin to see yourself that way, changes things in your life. You see, no man, the enemy of any man is, is ignorance. Every man's enemy is his ignorance. And one thing that the devil wants us not to have is light, the level of awareness. So I want you to be aware of who you are. You are not just an accident. You are not a biological accident. You are the daughter. Imagine yourself that God carries you and pampers you. He says you are the apple of his eye. So imagine yourself that everything that God has, he has put inside of you. You have it inside of you. All you need to do is to arise with it and to fresh. Hallelujah. You need to arise from the level of ignorance and come to awareness of who you are. That's why you don't belong to any other group but the group of the people that are in Zion. You need to arise to understand the value and the power that you carry inside of you. You need to arise to know that you have the power to arise and you cannot arise and thresh without the realization of this power. Let me tell you what thresh means. Thresh means to beat severely. It means to trash and to toss. It means to remove the unneeded shaft from, any, from, from, our, 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 from our lives. We remove it. That is threshing. So threshing takes power. Arising takes power. Threshing takes power. But it takes understanding. It takes techniques. And God has imputed inside of you what you need to thresh. Everything that does not belong to you, you thresh it out of your life. Hallelujah. You challenge the cycle of abuse, of limitations, of barrenness, of unfruitfulness. You arise to put an end to demonic oppression in your family. As a woman, as a daughter, we have the power, we have the authority to put an end to all these things. God has put it inside of us. Today, like I told you, you may not, you, have, you might have heard this before. This might be a reminder to you. But my purpose today is to remind you of these things, that you have it inside of you. There are several examples of women in the Bible who took authority. In the book of Numbers chapter 27, the story is told about the five daughters of Sephalohad. Those women, they refused to stay settle for the status quo. Even though their father, they were girls, they were daughters. And in the, in, in the land of Israel at that time, only sons were able to get inheritances. But these women, because they knew who they were, they went to Moses and told Moses and said, you know what, our father messed up. He died because of his own sin. And nobody can be taking this generational cost on, on top of us. So we are not going to take that. This is my own dramatic expression. So we're not going to do that. We are, we need our land. We want to take our land. And Moses, who had never experienced that. I love Moses. Do you know that Moses was a, a man that fought for women? <laughs> he was a man that believed in social justice. That's why I love, I love social justice as well. He was, the, he, so he went to God because ordinarily he would have been like, the law is the law. So whatever. But he went to God. He said, God, I have never heard of this before. It has never happened before. What should I do? And God said, yeah, go and give them their inheritance. But these women, they could have sat back and said, well, maybe we are going to get married. Maybe our husband will get his own inheritance and then we will share it. But no, they said, no, it belongs to us. They knew what they needed and they stood for their rights. And do you know what? They changed the constitution of the land. When you know who you are, you will change the law. The law will be changed because of you. Hallelujah. When you know who you are, you get boldness and you stand for the constitution. Deborah, in the book of Judges chapter five, she arose, Israel had been tormented for 20 years by this king, coming and going and tormenting them. People were not able to get out of the houses anymore. The cities were all empty. There were children were no longer able to play on the streets anymore, just like what is going on around us now. There are so many violence, so many violence going on in the land. But the Bible said, until I, Deborah, arose as a mother in Israel. She arose, she, had, she made sure that when the, the, the restoration was given back to the village life. 
because she knew who he, she was. Do you know that when the Bible was going to identify or was going to describe her in Judges chapter 5, if you read it, this, it one, one translation says, Deborah, the wife of Lapidoth, a, a prophetess, she judged and she ruled Israel. But when Deborah was going to arise, she said, until I, Deborah, a mother. The, regardless of who they called her, I, I don't care if I am wife of Lapidoth or whatever, I am standing in my position as a mother and I am taking back my children from the hand of the devil. She went, went into that area and stood up as a mother and she said, I am standing in the authority of a mother. Do you know that you are many things to many people? Sometimes you may need to start in your authority as a wife. Stand in the gap for your husband. Your husband is not making it. Your husband is wayward. Stand as a wife. You have the authority. Your children are not making it. Stand as a mother. It could be spiritual children. It could be natural children. You stand for them. You arise for them. And another woman in the scripture, in the same chapter, was Jael. That woman was the one that finished the battle that Deborah started. You know, when in that scripture, if you go home and you read it, if you've never read it before, the Bible said that De De Deborah said that it was through the hand of a woman that the, 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 that the nation would be taken back. Everybody thought it was Deborah, but it was this woman. Jael was a housewife. She lived in a tent, but what was inside of her, the power, the ability, the gift, and the talent was, that was inside of her, God used to save Israel. The man that they were looking for, Sisera, the commander-in-chief of the king, King Balak, the, uh, the king of that nation, uh, uh, he, he, he ran away because they chased them. He ran away, and he thought he had gone to hibernation. He thought he had gone to a hiding place, and Jael took him inside her tent. Her husband was not home. Her husband was a Kenite. Her husband was not home, and Jael took him inside and told him, you are saved here. She used her intelligence. The man said, give me water, and Jael said, uh -uh, water is not enough. Water will only quench your thirst, but milk will, keep, will get you to sleep. So she gave him warm milk, <laughs> and the man in his ignorance, drank the milk. Milk womb is a tranquilizer. So he just was relaxed so much, and the woman took peg. What was available to her? What, let me tell you something, woman. Whatever is in your hand is what you will need to use to thresh your enemies. I don't care what it is in your hand. Look at your life. What has God put inside your hand? What has God put inside of you? What is that talent? What is that call that God has called you into? What is that thing that keeps you going? That is a tool inside of your hand to thresh your enemy. The woman took a peg and went after his temple. Even thinking about it, I'm shivering because I cannot look at such like things like that on television. But this is so graphic. It, she took it and put it through his temple and she killed him. And she took what belonged to her. Do you know that after that time, Israel relaxed for 40 years. There was no torment because two women stood up. Two women arose and took their position. One was a judge. Another one was a housewife. So I don't care where you belong. If you are a housewife, there is something inside of you that you can use to trace and take over the nation that you belong to. If you are a CEO of an organization, it doesn't matter. God has given you something that can be used. Look into you. Look inside of you. There is something there. Hallelujah. My role today, my assignment is to bring out that king, that queen, that daughter of the Most High inside of you. Your physical status does not matter. You carry the fullness of Christ inside of you. God will give you strategies. You see, Jael used peg. He, she used milk to kick to kill Sisera the warrior. We must allow God to take what is inside of us, what is in our hands, our skills, our craft, our talents, and let him use it for his glory. When he uses those things for his glory, he, you become glorified. You see, when you put the spotlight on Jesus, he returns it back to you. 
Village life ceased until De Deborah arose as a mother in Israel. The conditions in the society became deplorable. The will of the people was broken by the cruelty and ruthlessness of the oppressors. As, as, as again, what is going on here? There was, there's a vacuum of the presence of God in the land today. There is no presence of God anymore, hallelujah. Like Deborah, we are the answer. Like Jael, we are the answer to this deplorable conditions because we are operating from the city of Zion. We are operating where the power resides. We are operating from there. Hallelujah. And we have that fire, fire inside us all. How do you arise? We arise in our personal relationship with Christ, the King. If you know that I read that chapter, I started, you know, if you read it from verse 6, it says in the day, it says the Lord, I will assemble the lead. I will gather those who have been driven. I'm reading Amos, uh, Micah chapter 4. And I will make the lame a remember, a, a remnant, and those who were cast off a strong nation. And the Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion. The Lord shall reign over them in Mount Zion. So we need to arise in our personal relationship with Christ, the King. We must reverently fear God and live a lifestyle of worship. I love your worship in this church. You worship God intentionally. Thank you so much, choir, for leading us into the presence of God. But we must not only limit it to when we gather. We, our life must be a life of worship and total surrender to him. We must connect with the source of the power. We must always, our life in the church must not be different from the life that we live outside the church. We cannot be living a life of worship in church and then be out there and live a life that does not have meaning a life that social media is controlling. No, that's not for us. We must arise in the place of prayer, in the place of fasting. We can no longer hide in our homes and watch with indifference what is going on in the lives in our lives. We can't do that anymore. We must activate the anointing that is inside of us. According to 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, it says you have an anointing and you know all things. You already have the anointing inside of you. So it must be activated. We must have a lifestyle of prayer, a lifestyle of worship that will cause the generation to return to their first love. We must add value to ourselves. It's not only physical value, not only with makeup and beautiful looking wigs and nice outfits, but even values in our spirits. We must continue to grow spiritually. We must add values in education. Daddy was talking about going back to school. Yes, that's how you thresh. You take ignorance out. You take unemployment out. That's threshing. We are not just standing and kicking the ground. We are threshing actively. Thresh is an active word. It's a verb. You continue to do it. You act on it. You get a little education here, you get a little here. You thresh, you arise and you thresh. You add value to yourself. I always tell people, some of the women with me, I tell them, I say, up until today, I'm still adding value to myself. So that, God forbid, bad thing. If my husband says, ah, you know what, I need to move on. It will be good riddance. To, in fact, he would think twice before moving on. Because I will be so valuable to him that it will be like, you know what, I can't do it. I just have to be here. Uh, you know, that is, that is adding value to yourself. We must add value in every area. Our spouses, our, the people around us must look at us and say, yes, Jesus lives inside of us. We must be spiritually educated. We must get threshing strategies in the place of prayer. The Bible tells us, it says in that, it says, why, in verse 9, it says, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king among you? The king is inside of you. Has your counselor perished? The Holy Spirit is in you. So for you to arise, for you to thresh, you must engage the counselor, the Holy Spirit. It's not Judge Judy that should be our counselor. It, or, I, mean, I don't know if you guys have Judge Judy still there. I lived in America for about 16 years, so we had Judge Judy. There is, uh, there, there is Oprah Winfrey. How can Oprah be talking to you and be encouraging you and be counseling you about marriage when she has never been married? So you must have the counselor as the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, engage him. He will give you a mouth according to Luke chapter 21 verse 15. He will give you a mouth. He will give you a wisdom which no man or your adversary will be able to withstand. 
So when you are, when you engage the Holy Spirit, He gives you wisdom. He gives you what to say. According to Isaiah chapter 50, verse 4, when you wake up in the morning, He says that He has given me the tongue of the learning to know what to say to the weary. Your words will bring expression to the grace of God that is inside of you. Your words will begin to encourage others. That is stretching. Your words will begin to pull people out of situations that they are. That is stretching. You are taking your community for Christ, you are taking your home for Jesus. You are taking everything around you. Everything around you, you are taking them for Jesus. We must arise with power to be free so that we can set others free. And the Bible says he has given us a horn. According to that chapter, verse verse 13, it says, I will make your horn iron. He has given you a horn. Horn signifies power. You have the power inside of it. So that power is in you. We arise to trash. You see that horn, when the power is there, the, the, you have dominion, you have glory, you have fierceness, you go with boldness. Holy Spirit is our source of power, is the dynamis. We get dynamis from him, the source of our power. So engage in prayer to arise. I'm a teacher. I like to give you points so that you will remember. Engage to arise and fresh. Engage in the power of prayer and fasting. Then engage the power of the Holy Spirit. You find out that no matter what the situation in your life, you begin to, 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 to move forward. You thresh the enemy. We arise to thresh, not to look pretty only. Threshing removes. What threshing does is that it removes the superficial in order to, to, up, to expose the deep. So when we are threshing, we are actually removing what does not belong, especially to start with in us. We remove the superficial, then we get into the deep. Then when we get into the deep, then we now start to call into the deep. The Bible says the deep calleth into the deep. Hallelujah. So the deep inside of you begins to call to the deep. So when you get to the top, you only attract people at the top. You don't attract non-entities. You don't attract people who are gossips. You don't attract backbiters. You don't attract people who are not going anywhere. You begin to call into the deep, the deep things. You begin to call into the higher hierarchies. Hallelujah. That is what it means to have to arise. We thresh with the word of God, working from in us from inside out. The Bible says the word of God is the one that works inside of us. So we now progress from glory to glory. Hallelujah. There is a way with the word of God that after you eat that word for so long, it changes your outlook. It changes your character, it changes and it gives you boldness and courage. We thresh by challenging doubt. One of the weapons that the enemy puts in our heart is doubt, in our mind, we cannot access our spirit is in our mind. We challenge doubts. We challenge negative reports about what the words concerning our life. We must thresh by faith. We change the status quo. Faith is important in threshing. We change the status quo of barrenness. We change the status quo of immigration. We change the status quo of not being able to settle down. After we are in the prayer closet, we pray in the prayer closet, we come out of the closet, we come out by faith. Faith speaks the word of God and acts on it despite what the facts will look like. In my own story, in my own life, I got married when I was 27. And right after I got married, we, I migrated to the United States. My husband was in Nigeria. When I, so he came to join me later. But the devil now said we will not have children. Do you know what we did? Because I, I have known God. I have put the word of God. Both of us, we have put the word of God inside of us so much. We had prayed. When we got our first home, we we took a room out of it, and we decorated that. I'm talking to you about faith, walking by faith. We decorated that, you know, we painted, because I wanted, we both wanted a boy as our first child, and we wanted a girl as our second child. We had already put it down, we wrote it down, we had the names for both of our children. And then we, we bought our house, we put in the, in the room a, a crib. I went to Toys R Us, bought, uh, Babies R Us, bought stuff, bought clothes, not one, two clothes, filled the closet with baby boy's clothes, put a crib there, put marble on the crib, painted the room, you know, and on the door, you know those uh, license plates, the little, little license plate that they use as tags, as key tags. I got one, it says John. I went to the store and I got it and I put it on the door and the whole room was looking beautiful. As if we put a rocking chair there, I put a teddy bear on the rocking chair. And then we invited our pastors to come and pray 
for us, for the house. And when my father and the Lord came, he said, are you pregnant? I said, we received it by faith. I was not pregnant at that time, but faith goes out. Faith is crazy. I, we moved into that house in the month of uh, July, 1999, August 15, 2000, I had my baby boy. He came exactly a year after. The same thing we did for my baby girl. We acted in faith. If you, if the word has called you barren today, I want you to rise. I want you to thresh that spirit of barrenness. I want you to rise. Take an act of faith. Do what you need to do. Get a room. Put baby things there and challenge God. Tell God, God, this is for you. You told me to do this. I am doing it. You told me to act by faith. By the grace of God, by next year, you will call and we will share a testimony. Hallelujah. We speak the word of God by faith. Hallelujah. We thresh by nurturing, taking the destinies of our children. As we cradle their heads, we wash them with soap and with water. We begin to speak the word, the, the word of God into them. Don't allow the world to bring your children up for you. Don't allow social media. You trash, trash in those areas. We trash by family protecting the destiny of our children. Jacob had protected the destiny of Moses. That's the reason he's still here today. Mary hid the words of Jesus in her heart. That's the reason Jesus was able to make it. She did not go around and be saying rubbish about Jesus Christ. Elizabeth would not allow the family of Zechariah to name her son because God said he would be called John. We thresh by teaching our children the right way to go. Let me conclude by telling you today, when a woman arises, things begin to normalize. The land of Israel rested for 40 years after Deborah took over. Before her, it was a maximum of 20 years of rest. When a woman arises, when the daughter of God arises, she brings rest and peace, not only to her home, but to generations after her. I charge you today, brethren, take your place as a daughter of God. You are not a doormat. You are not a sex object. You are a leader. Lead with your words, lead with your actions, let your countenance, and after you have won, the Bible says we must give the spoil to God. That's what it says in that scripture. Everything must be given to God. All the glory, you must return to God and give him glory so that you can continue to thresh. Hallelujah. Until a woman arises, village life will continue to cease. I charge you today, arise and give the spoil to God. May God bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. I have the God gave me, if you just give me five minutes, God gave me a little assignment just to pray for some sets of people. It's four categories of people. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for the sick. The Lord gave me when I was ordained a pastor, the Lord gave me a mandate that I must, anytime I minister, I must address sickness in lives of people. So mama, please, if it's okay with you, just to pray for these four sets of people. Hallelujah. The Bible says in the book of Exodus, chapter 23, verse 25, it says you will serve the Lord your God and he will bless your bread and water. He will take sickness from the midst of you. None shall be barren. He will fulfill the number of your days. This afternoon, if there's anyone among us that is sick, I address that sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. Place your hand. If you know anyone that is sick, begin to imagine them. The Bible says that he took our sickness. He took our infirmity. He nailed it to the cross. By his stripes, we have been healed. I call you healed in the name of Jesus. Every Thing that is not of God inside of your body. The Bible, the word of the Lord says, the strangers hear my voice. They get afraid and they run out of their hidden places. I don't care if it's a headache. I don't care if it is cancer. I don't care if it is fibroids. I don't care whatever it is that is in your body. I curse it to the roots right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The sickness that kills women will not touch you. The sickness that takes women out will not cause, touch you. I cause cancer, any form of cancer in anybody from today on in the mighty name of Jesus. You are healed in the name of Jesus. The second category of people are the people that are looking unto God for the fruit of the womb. Because I went through it, God has given me permission to address infertility, to address barrenness. The Bible tells us in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verse 14, it says you shall be blessed above all people.
peoples. No barren male or female is among you. So because you belong to Zion, you are no longer permitted to be barren. By this time next year, you carry your baby in the mighty name of Jesus. I cause unfruitfulness. When God created you, he created you perfect. He created you fruitful. He said you should multiply. I decree the covenant of multiplication over you from today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I don't care where the issue is. The Bible says male or female shall not be barren. I come against no spam count in the, in the lives of our males. In the name of Jesus, I declare you fruitful. You carry your twins. You carry your triplets in the name of Jesus. And those who are looking for papers. It's so, it's so interesting that when we, we lived in America for about 16 years and God took us and told us to leave America. That's a story for another day. If I get the opportunity another day, I'll tell you that story. Told us to move from America to move to Canada. And that when we move to Canada, the Lord told us that we become immigration veal. V-I-L-L-E, that our church and the anointing that is upon us, upon my husband that comes to me today is to set people free from immigration issues. And we have seen dramatic results in my church. And if you look at Joshua chapter one, verse three, it says anywhere the sole of your foot. It does not say feet, just one foot. When you touch that place, he has taken it to you. So all you need to do is to put one foot on the ground. You are, the Lord has taken this nation, this nation of the United States of America for you. Amos chapter 9 verse 13 says that he will plant you and you will no longer be uprooted. Hallelujah. The book of 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 10 says he will appoint a place of your own and you will no longer move. So the moment you step into America, the Lord has appointed that place for you and you will no longer be moved in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, the, the, the situation, the, the, the constitution of the country can be changed because of you. There might be a change very soon in the constitution that will permit you, that will allow you to become legal residents of that country in the mighty name of Jesus. I see an influx of green cards among you. I see an influx of green cards among you. In the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Just receive it. We, we don't have time to be praying on and on. And the last category of people are those who are looking unto God for husbands and for partners. The Bible tells us in the book of Isaiah chapter 34, verse 16, it says, search from the book of the Lord and read, not one of these shall fail, not one shall lack her mate, not one of the word of God will fail. The Lord has provided your Boaz for you. The Lord will bring him to you in the name of Jesus. The Lord has provided your roof for you. The Lord will bring that to you in the mighty name of Jesus. You will be getting married. You will be getting married. You will be Christian children in the name of Jesus. So shall it be. Father, we adore you. We thank you. Your words are yea and amen. This is the confidence that we have, that if we ask anything according to your will, you hear us. And once we know that you hear us, we know that we have received what we have asked of you. We thank you, Father, because we ask and we receive. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, mommy. Thank you for the privilege. May God bless you. Amen. That was awesome. That was wonderful. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man of, woman of God, I want to say thank you, man. We appreciate you so much. We can feel the presence of God. And that word is underrated. It's as if, you no, know, we, we, you know, we share the same uh, notepad. If you see my notes for Sunday, everything she said was in it. So it's perfect. We appreciate you so much and we celebrate the grace of God upon your life. You are still coming to Indie Life and Direct. We don't want to do, we don't want to do Zoom. We want to see you here, Life and Direct. And Almighty God will bless you, ma. And the anointing of God upon your life will not run dry. 
Thank you so much, Ma. We appreciate you. And our regards to Daddy and our younger ones. Tell Daddy that we love us, love him so much for allow you to do what you are doing. You are a blessing to your generation. 